Oh, Father, glory to God. Praise you. We worship you in praise. We magnify the name that's above every name that's named. Not only in this world, but in the world to come. We are quick to bow our knee and confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord to the glory, to the glory, to the glory of God the Father. Yad Hevave Himself. Oh, praise you and bless you. Bless you. For the time has come glory to be manifest. You remember in my word, saith the Lord, when the glory was manifest as cloud, then in another place at another time the glory was manifest as rain. Then in another time the glory was manifest as fire or lightning. Then at other times the glory was manifest as wind. But there has not been a time yet, but the time is now for the glory to be manifest in all those ways at the same time. Rain is only rain. A cloud is only a cloud. The wind is only the wind. The lightning is only lightning. But when they all come together, it is a storm. And a glory storm is coming. Hallelujah. And the time for it. I told you about it, and I told you about it, and I told you about it, and now the time has come. It's happening in different places, but it's coming together to be manifest to do what it was designed to do. I said in my word, they'll not take root. I will breathe on them and they'll wither away. The Babylonian system of Man trying to meet his own needs beyond me and without me, saith the Lord, is withering away. And those that are attempting to reestablish it and to shore it up and trying to get it to go again will fail and fall at its feet. It'll not come to pass, not in this country or any other country, saith the Lord. But I'll tell you this, the United States of America belongs to me. It doesn't belong to the Democratic Party. It doesn't belong to the Republican Party. And I'll tell you something, it doesn't just belong to all the people, it belongs to my people. And I will raise it up. And I have breathed on that system and it'll not 
take root, it will wither away. You mark my word. The time is now, and you'll see it, and you'll say, that's what the Lord was talking about. That's what he was saying. Yes. And it'll come to pass in the land of the living. We're not done here yet. Don't quit. Don't stop. No. There is no power on earth stronger than your faith in God. All the devils of hell put together could not defeat one man. your blood brother. Remember, there is a man in the Godhead. There's God, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. A man is in the Godhead. Hallelujah. Representing you. There is no power on this earth that can overcome your faith in God. So rise up with a new voice. Rise up with a strength like never before. And shake yourself and begin to say, glory be to God in the highest. This is only the beginning, not the end. This is the, this is the best. This is the top. And we're on our way. And we'll not be defeated. And we'll not quit. And we'll not lack. And we'll not fall short. And we'll not be diminished. And we will not be taken away, saith the Lord. We will not. We will not. We are here to stay until God takes us away. And nobody else can do it. Amen. Yeah. Woo. Glory. 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 I love you, man. Praise God. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Did you have a good day today? <laughs> it ain't over yet. <laughs> you can be seated. Billy, thank you for allowing Gloria and me to come kick up our heels and enjoy the word with you guys. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Sister Billy. Thank you, Father, for your word tonight. You're blessed, it's blessed, we're blessed. Thank you. And we give you praise and honor. It is the word of the living Almighty God. Oh, my. <laughs> and we come before with awesome respect. Trembling yet with a sense of belonging because you sent your word and it saved us. You sent your word and it healed us. You sent your word and it filled us with your spirit. You sent your word. 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 Hallelujah. And we thank you for it. In 
Tonight we receive and we'll speak what we hear you say and we'll do what we see you do. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Open your Bibles with me tonight, please, to the 11th chapter of Mark's Gospel, the absolute bedrock teaching of the, on the subject of real Bible faith, spoken and taught by Jesus, but thank God he didn't just talk about it, he demonstrated it, amen. And so if you'll turn there with me, and let's begin reading. in the 11th verse. Now this first part of this has been skipped over uh, far too much in the study of faith without what we're about to see here, all the rest of it uh, is uh, just uh, a side issue because it won't work. Jesus, this is the 11th verse, Mark 11, 11. Jesus <clears throat> entered into Jerusalem and into the temple and when he had looked round about upon all things and now the evening was come he went out unto Bethany with the twelve. That is maybe the most important thing about this entire teaching right there. He went into that temple, looked around, saw all that was going on, heard all that was being said, did not say a word. Now that's hard on most people. <laughs> Don't say a word. Did not do a thing. Now that place was just as fouled up on that day as it was going to be the next day. And all that was wrong in there the next day was wrong in there that day. But he didn't say a word. Didn't do anything. Just looked round about and went home. Why? Why didn't he do something? Why didn't he say something? Because he said, I only say what I hear my father say, and I only do what I see my father do, and he didn't say anything, and he didn't do anything, so neither did Jesus. Now, all of those same scriptures that he quoted the next day, he knew all of those the day before. But had he gone in there on his own, it would have made a mess. Why? Well, what do you suppose he did all night that night? Aha. Uh -huh. Found out what the father had to say and what he wanted to do tomorrow. Amen. Wisdom is the principal thing, not a principal thing. It is the principal thing. And there's, there's far too much uh, among us, those of us that uh, live our lives by faith, and, and this is what we do uh, for everything. But there's far too much uh, just knee-jerk reaction. You have a pain, I got them healed. And you holler back at the TV all the time. <laughs> holler at the politicians <laughs> and all that. Oh, I'm just as guilty as you are. 
Well, maybe not that bad. But <laughs> no, I'm worse. I'm the chiefest of all sinners here. Ah, Lord, glory to you hear what that... Ah, goodness you. <laughs> she said, now, can I? But yeah, I heard him. <laughs> Far too many times to just lay hands on somebody, just anoint somebody with oil, and, and let's just pray. If that don't work, pray something else, dear God. Confess this. Well, you can confess it 625,000 times, and if you haven't got any faith, it ain't going to work the 627, 80,000 times either. You're not going to work up faith. There comes a time to be still and know that I'm God. Amen. Now, watch the timeline. It was <clears throat> evening. Now, on the morrow, the next morning, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came. Now he saw that fig tree a long ways off. So it must not have been growing just right there by the, you know, by the road. Having leaves, he came, if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet. And he answered that tree. The tree said something. And Jesus answered it. The tree said, you ain't getting none to eat here today. <laughs> Jesus said, <laughs> you ought not said that to me. <laughs> he answered and said to it, <clears throat> no man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. That's all he said. He didn't carry on about it. He didn't cast the devil out of it or on it. He spoke the desired end results and turned around and headed on where he was going. Turned his back on that thing. <clears throat> and if his disciples hadn't brought it up, I doubt very seriously if Jesus would have ever said a word about it. He'd just gone on what he was doing. Now, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> they came to Jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple. Now it's different today. What's different about it? He spent the night listening to God. He began to cast out them that sold and and bought in the temple, overthrew the tables of the money changers. Now you don't, you don't want to be doing this without the anointing. Somebody will feed you one of those tables. They'll spank you with it. And then you'll go, I didn't know, see how come God didn't help me? How come I got this knot on my head? You went a day early. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught, saying unto them, Is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves? Now, that's not all that he said, that is a summary of what he said. He was there all day. They had a meeting whether they wanted it or not. So now there must have been an unusual anointing on him. Turn over the money tables dump everything that those people were doing, and they sit there and listen to you preach all day. Wow. Now notice, 
the scribes and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people were astonished at his doctrine. Man. And when the evening was come, he went out of the city. He'd been there all day. So now here, from morning to evening, here we have approximately 12 hours, right? Now, in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the root. But now wait a minute. In verse 19, when the evening was come, he went out of the city. Now you know Peter as well as I do. If that tree, fig tree had, been, had any sign, I mean if the leaves had just changed color a little bit, he'd have said, look at that. I mean, you know, he just called their attention to it. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but Peter, you know, Peter had a, uh, he's kind of like some other people I know, uh, especially me, for talking and thinking about it later. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes it got him in trouble and sometimes he walked on the water too. Amen. Oh, yeah. You, <laughs> well, Evening was come, he went out of the city. Well, I guess it just didn't work this time. Huh. He did curse that tree, didn't he? Didn't you hear him? Yeah, I heard him. Whew. Won't you ask him? No, I ain't going to ask him, you ask him. He still got that rope in his hand. I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to say nothing to him that puts that rope down. You go, you go ask him. I ain't asking. Sure thought something would happen to that tree, though. My goodness. Well, you just never know. <laughs> I am tired of hearing you just never know what God is going to do. <laughs> In the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. No wonder they didn't see it. Now this is 24 hours later. But by now, the thing is dried completely up from the roots, from the root structure up through the tree and out to the leaves, not the other way around. That's the way faith works. That's the way the Word of God works. It, it, it works the same thing uh, in you and on you. People look for the healing power of God to do something on the outside when all the time it's coming from the inside. Did you ever notice that man is the only animal on earth that doesn't grow his own clothes from the inside out? Huh? Why? Man's clothing originally was the glory of God. You couldn't see his naked body until the light went out on the inside and then you could see the outside. But it was from the inside out, not from the outside in. That's just the way spiritual things are. The, your, your body is subject to your spirit. Amen. Now, Peter, I told you, calling to remembrance said unto him, Master, look, the fig tree which you curse is withered away as if Jesus uh, was going to be surprised. <laughs> Jesus answering said unto them, <clears throat> Now boys, I don't expect any of y'all to do this. 
After all, I'm the son of God, you know. I can do these kind of things. <laughs> but I don't want you guys going around cursing trees because you're going to fall flat to your face and give us all our bad names. Because it ain't going to work for you. <laughs> no, that, that wasn't his answer. In fact, he intended for them to do just exactly the opposite. He intended for them to do everything he did. Not only what he did, but better things than that. Eventually, when the, when the Holy Ghost would come, he said, I'm going to my Father, and when that day comes, uh, greater works than these you'll do. No, he, 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 uh, you know, he, he didn't say, um, well, <clears throat> I know it's hard. Besides that, the economy's gone down the tubes. <clears throat> Times like these, faith is Now, but do the best you can. <laughs> Try anyway. <laughs> what did he say? Have faith in God. <laughs> Not hard. Have faith in God. Does that sound like a suggestion to you? Does it sound like a nice little thing we could maybe do here once in a while, but don't worry about it if you can't quite make it? I mean, I really tried, Jesus. I tried to have, have faith in God. Yeah, but I have faith in God. Yeah, but I don't have faith in God. Yeah, but she have faith in God. Yeah, but he have faith in God. Yeah, but the Democrats have faith in God. Yeah, but the Republicans have faith in God. Oh, hallelujah. And the very next word. For sternly I say to you, whosoever. Boy, that settled it right there. Well, I know Brother Copeland, but now you see... Uh, I, I just, you know, I, I, I guess I'm just a, a very complex person. <laughs> no, you just full on belief. <laughs> and confused. You remember Brother Hagin telling about the, he, he went into a, a, um, a meeting and was there for several days and there was a woman came to him and said, Brother Hagin, you, uh, you have confused me. He said, no, ma'am. You was confused when I got here. <laughs> you just didn't know it yet. <laughs> he said, may I ask you a question? She said, uh-huh. He said, uh, do, you, do you ever go up in the attic and turn on a light or turn on a flashlight and say, oh my, look at all the dirt that light caused. <laughs> no, he said the dirt was there before you ever went up there. The dirt was there before you ever turned the light on. The light just brought it into view. Amen. Amen. No, no. Have faith in 
God. Well, I don't know whether that's for me or not. Are you a whosoever? Surely you are. Then have faith in God. Now notice he said verily. He was stern about it. Very serious about it. He wasn't dancing around out there giggling, laughing, you know, running around that tree or something. Very sternly. Whosoever shall say to this, this, this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Now, Matthew recorded it like this. He said, you will not only do that which was done to this fig tree, but if you say to that mountain, be removed, it will obey you. Hallelujah. Whew. Glory to God. Now, have faith in God. Oh, but Brother Copeland, I lost my job. No, you didn't. You didn't lose your job. If that was your job, that's probably the reason why you lost it. If that was your source, I know that's why you lost it. Because you had faith in something other than God. Now, let me tell you something. The man or the woman that lives by faith never ever have to change their lifestyle because of the economy, because of, of a flu epidemic, or because of a plague, or because of a, uh, of a terrorist attack. No, no, no. We're not even connected to all of that. We live, all of, we live the same way all the time. The economy goes up, it goes down, around, around, around. But... Uh, we, just, we just continue to tithe and give and do what we're told to do, and he just continues to meet our needs. Why? He is our source, and our connection with him is our faith, praise God. And we have faith in God. We live by faith. We walk by faith. Now, I, I want to deal with something. The Lord dealt with me earlier this afternoon for me to uh, take care of this tonight. All of this uproar, about health care reform. Now listen to me very carefully. They, meaning government, political parties, they can't fix it. It's not a political problem. It is the harvesting of a very, very sinful thing years ago, and this thing has come home to roost. I was praying about it. This, this happened just this week. I was praying about it, and the Lord uh, visited me over it. And I said, Lord, where's the seed to this mess? What, what, what brought this on? You know, we, we, we got this, this huge, just this huge medical system. And it, it, it just keeps going downhill. And it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And, and they try to fix it and shore it up. And they've tried to do this and they've tried to do that. What's the matter with it? What, what? He said, well, in the first place, it's not a political problem. It's not a financial problem. It's a spiritual problem. And he said, until somebody breaks the curse of it, then it's going to just go on down and go on down. But he said that the time has come now to where as a system, it's too late to fix it. But he said it's not too late to replace it. Oh, you mean we're going to have socialized medicine? Don't you ever say that to me. I've had all the Babylon I want. There are only two forms of government on the face of the earth. You listen to me? The United States originated, the Constitution of the United States originally 
was 75% direct quotes from Scripture, and the other 25% were based on Scripture. It was not capitalism. It was a free market based on the power of God and recognition of him and in him we trust. The other form of government was manifest at the Tower of Babel. It's had a lot of names over the years. At the present time, it's called socialism. It is socialism. It's been called, it, it's been called communism. It's been called thisism and thatism. It's been called everything you can think of, but, it, but it, usually you'll see social attached to it some way or another because it's society trying to meet its own needs by living off one another and has its own religious uh, system. It has its own uh, medical or healing system. It has its own education system and all of that without God. So what happened to the health care system? No, it's not the fault of the socialists. It's not the fault of a government. No, it never is. It was the fault of the church. It's always laid at our feet because we're the one with the authority. We're the one with the full armor of God. We're the one with the book. We're the one with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We are the one that have the authority of the name of Jesus and a blood-bought, blood-infused, blood-empowered covenant. And when we begin to just sit around and look around and let the devil get away with whatever he wants to get away with. And I said, Lord, uh, what's the seed to this? He said, when my people walked away from my health care and denied that I could heal anybody anymore or would heal anybody anymore and accused me of making them sick and then they built huge hospitals and facilities to take the place of my healing power and put my name on the front of it and tried to get me to bless it. Then he said, I blessed it as far as I could. And anybody that would cry out to me, I'm there for you. And then closed their doors to praying people. Closed their doors to the miraculous and then called in outside the, the social train, the, the Babylonians systemized medical system to operate in a hospital that's got God's name on the front of it. You got heathens in there practicing medicine and they're still practicing, that's all they know how to do. Now, I'm not putting down people, you understand? I, I'm, I'm not uh, criticizing people at all. Preachers are the most guilty of all. Standing in the pulpit and denying the power thereof. And the scripture says, you better get out of there. Yeah, but my grandma helped build that church. I don't care if her picture is engraved in stone. Get up and get out of there. The scripture says when they done having a form of godliness and deny the power thereof, get out, turn away. It didn't say quit praying for them. It didn't say quit loving them. It just said quit sitting over in the middle of that unbelief. Amen. Well, 
Then we turned around and forfeited the education system and turned it over to sinners. Well, what do you expect them to do? They're sinners. What else are you going to get out? You turn it over to them and then you try to control them? Got up and preached against the motion picture screens, the most powerful communication tool that God's ever put into the the hands of human beings to, with which to preach the gospel. All things were met, created for and by him and for his gospel, praise God. Stood up there and preached against it and, and, all, and all that and then tried to create, create committees so they couldn't talk ugly. And then you talk ugly about them because they talk ugly. Well, what do you think they do? They talk ugly, man. I mean, that's all they do. Sinners are sinning. That's what they do. They sin for a living. They sin for fun. They sin when they try. They sin when they don't try. I know. I used to be one of them. And I didn't want you messing with my sin. Amen. I still love you. You still love me. <laughs> I'm just telling you what the Lord told me the other day, and he wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't as easy on me as I am on you. And he said, now the seed of that, by telling me to my face, not to have any more to do with the healing of the sick, he said, I haven't changed. They did. And when they sowed that seed, by my grace and my mercy, it's taken all of these years. And I have waited and waited and waited for you to repent. I instructed Oral Roberts to build a place dedicated to my healing power. And who fought him the most, the Lord said, the churches. His own partners fought him over it. Now, you know what that is? That is the answer to the question of how dumb can you get? <laughs> Man, I prayed for the sick in the city of faith a lot, more than a few times. And it was the easiest place to get people healed I've ever been in my life. Why? It was built for prayer. Healing, divine healing was first. Not shoved off in the, in the well, we hope so, back room somewhere. Amen. Amen. I didn't think God wanted to build hospitals. Well, he wouldn't have had to if the people had stayed with his word. Religion has fought every manifestation of Jesus' power since the day he first turned the water into wine. Amen? Ah, but there is a people. There is a Holy Ghost people in the land. There is a people that not only believes that Jesus saves, Jesus baptizes in the Holy Ghost, Jesus heals by his divine power and does miracles today, but they believe that Almighty God is the great financier and that Jesus is our Melchizedek. Hallelujah. How, will you please tell me, could have God turned the a trillion dollar economy over to Christian people in this country? They didn't believe God had any money to start with. And if he did, he ain't going to give me any of it. Why? No faith in God. Faith in the system. No faith in God. Oh, yes, amen. But it's over here's my source. Have faith in God. Now, here, oh, my. Therefore, I 
I say unto you, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them, and when you stand praying, forgive. The Lord started dealing with me. He's been dealing with me on this for over 40 years. It'll be 43 years in January. But I, I, I he, he, oh man, he started pulling me up about this, pulling me up about it, pulling me up about it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Well, Lord, I mean, when I'm, 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 every time something happens, I, 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 I'm walking in the commandment of love. And when I miss it, uh, I'm, I'm endeavoring to be quick to repent. He said, you are, and you're to be commended for that. But you don't understand what was being said here. I said, I don't. It said forgive. No, he said it didn't say forgive. I sure thought it did. When you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any. Well, he said, read the rest of it. Oh, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Ah, something going on here. Now, he said if you don't forgive, your heavenly Father can't forgive you your trespasses. It isn't that he's unwilling. You disconnected. Ah. He said, give, and it'll be given unto you again. Forgive, forgive. Oh. Now hang on to that thought. We're going somewhere with it. We're working on something. You stay with me, okay? You'll be glad when we get there, and you'll know it. <laughs> I preached this to me already. I know how it's coming out, I think. <laughs> At least I know one of the endings. <laughs> it may go somewhere else entirely around this group. I don't know. Man, you get, you get around a lot of people that pray in the Holy Ghost a lot of the time. And I'm telling you, whoo. It can, it can make some, some exciting turns. When you stand praying, forgive. Now, the word of the Lord came to me, and I, and, and I kept reading that over and over. When you stand praying, forgive. When you stand praying, forgive. Forgive. And, and then he said, he said, Kenneth, what is forgiveness? Well, I prayed in the spirit there a little bit further, and I said, oh, that's grace. He said, didn't I say in my word, to you to minister grace to one another? I said, yes, sir. He said, didn't I say speak words of grace to one another and edify one another? I said, yes, sir. He said, when you forgive out of grace and love, you release forgiveness. You're ministering grace. Yes, sir. Now, he said the, to forgive is releasing the love, sin, overpowering force of grace and you release it as an act of your will it doesn't have anything to do with your feelings and it has nothing to do with other people uh, just I forgive why that's what Jesus said for me to do I obey him don't make any difference what I think about it in the name of Jesus I forgive I release it by faith. I have faith in God and I forgive. Now what happened when you did that? 
where sin does abound, grace does much more abound. He abound, abound. So your heavenly Father may forgive you. He's able to make all grace abound toward you. that you always having all sufficiency in all things may continue to be generous and abound to every good work regardless of what's happening in the world economy. Most especially when people are hurting in the economy. But listen, let me tell you something. I got to get down here while I can talk to you a minute. There is something you remember the scripture says that this whole creation is yearning and, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's crying out for what? Do you remember? A manifestation of the sons of God. Why? Why, why, does, why does the ground want a manifestation of the sons of God? Why would trees want a manifestation of the sons of God? All creation are yearning and crying out for a manifestation of the sons of God. Go all the way back to the book of Genesis when God blessed Adam and he said, be fruitful, multiply, have dominion and all of that. But then he said, replenish the earth. No, no, you didn't. Well, yeah, replenish the earth. Well, what does that mean? Well, I, you know, I guess there was people here before them, and they had to go away, so now we're supposed to have babies and replace them. Once this natural, physical planet, this part of this natural, material universe, not only does every living thing need nourishment, but it needs to be replenished to keep it from wearing out. And when sin came and the blessing died out, the planet immediately began to wear out and there was no blessing present to replenish it. And we're seeing the results of it. The magnetic field has decayed and decayed and decayed and decayed while the church went deeper and deeper into religion and they don't even know they got a blessing. Except when they sneeze, God bless you. And the whole creation is saying, it is somebody here that can release a blessing on me. I'm dying here, don't you understand? It's not global warming and it sure didn't come out of your exhaust pipe. The thing's wearing, and it, it wasn't created for sin. It was created for the glory of God, and it was created for life. Created for Jesus and his family. Hallelujah. And it's groaning for somebody with the blessing of Abraham to replenish it. And finally, and people like you in these last days began to pray and back in the 70s they were screaming and hollering the planet is freezing and it's going to be an ice place we're going to have another ice age and so we praying and the thing starts warming up oh my god we're going to die oh global warming global warming now wouldn't you think that people that were honestly and sincerely 
trying their best to do something about this poor old dying, burning planet. If this was real, if this was honest and sincere, don't you think if it started cooling off, they'd be thrilled about it? Huh? Look like they would. Don't thank God it's working. Oh, let's get more electric cars. It's working, it's working, it's working. Hey, I got some news for you. It's been cooling for the last 10 years. That's right. Why? It ain't because somebody's burning corn in their gas tank. <laughs> they used to drink it, and now they put it in the car. <laughs> the car don't want it either. <laughs> oh, I have a brilliant idea. Ah, let's quit growing food where we can have gas. <laughs> no, that's how dumb can you get. <laughs> Amen. No, yeah, well, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's put, the, let's put all our food in the gas tank. <laughs> <laughs> what is that, Brother Copeland? That's people without God trying to run things. <laughs> and they said, so dumb, they don't know whether to get hot or cold. And whichever it goes, they don't know to come in or go out. A man without God is the dumbest animal on the face of the earth. Absolutely. Amen. Some of us ain't too hot with God, you know. But boy, I mean a man without God. Oh, you know, Brother Copeland, that fellow's uh, education is keeping him away from God. No, it ain't. He ain't got any education. Not if he don't know God. All he got is a bunch of numbers and don't know what in the world to do with them. <laughs> Only 3% of the college graduates in the whole world are successful in life. <laughs> Why? They don't know what to do with it. <laughs> and most of them, what they're doing has nothing to do with where they went to school. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Amen. <laughs> oh, my, ain't we a mess without God. I mean, we just, you know, we, we just dumb as rocks. That's all it is. To, and, you know, the animals don't have any choice. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> it's a wonderful thing. The whole creation is yearning for a manifestation of the body of Christ to rise up with the blessing of God that was released in this planet. And when we began to pray and when we began to go before God, I'm telling you, that cycle turned over. And when it did, it started stabilizing and the temperature started going down. And the problem with that is they can't get any more government grants. And ain't nobody going to fall for that cooling off deal for a while because <laughs> they just now bought the hot deal. <laughs> well, we went overboard. Everybody get you some more gas and burn it. Oh, we went overboard. We went, the thing is going to be an ice cap if we don't get our cars going. We, can, we need 42 million more cars. We got to get some, we got to get some gas up in that sky. We're going to all freeze to death. <laughs> ah, political bull. That's all it is. <laughs> Amen. But the people of God, people that know God, praying people that have faith in God, Hot or cold, they care less. Amen. He created the thing. He can take care of it yes. till I'm done with it. Yes. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, we, we, we're not walking in fear. 
Walking in faith. Faith changes things. Hallelujah. And I have it on good authority. By three young Jew boys. Threw them in a furnace so hot. Killed everybody around them. <laughs> Didn't have a thing in the world to do with them, did it? Huh? No. Why? Why didn't it affect them? Because they weren't dependent on that king. Had they been dependent on the king, they'd have bowed their knee. If they bowed their knee, they'd have burned whether it was in that furnace or not. What you compromise to keep, you will lose. Somewhere along, you'll lose it. You sow the compromise to keep it. You compromise on the quality. You compromise on your tithe. You compromise on your giving. You begin to compromise because of the economy. And I'll guarantee you, your 401k will become an 01k. Amen. Why? Why? Because you had faith in failure. My well, brother Copeland, I didn't have faith in it. I had fear of it. Well, what in the world do you think faith in it is? That's what fear is. Is faith in the curse. And you compromise it. Well, I just can't. That just don't make any sense to me, brother Copeland. It wasn't supposed to make sense. It makes faith. Faith don't make sense. Faith changes sense. It changes things around you. And they told that king, it don't make any difference to us. Our God will deliver us. And whether you put us in that furnace or whether you don't, we ain't bowing down. The furnace doesn't have anything to do with it. We're not bowing down to you now. And if you turn us loose, we won't bow down to you. So if you're going to put us in the furnace, what are you waiting on? Let's get on in there. <laughs> Praise God. Bring her on. Well, see, God was already in there. Yeah. There was a blessing wall. You ought to ask Satan about that sometime. That's the reason God allowed us to see behind the scenes in, in the first chapter of Job. It tells you where Job got his money, and it tells you how he broke down that blessing wall, and it tells you what sin he was accused of, which was cursing God. And it tells you what Satan did, and what Satan said to God is a key issue there. He said, does he serve you for nothing? You've built a wall around him. You've blessed him and all that he has. I'd had Satan so hacked off he couldn't get through there, and that's the thing that was driving him. That's what was just, uh, he was obsessed with it. He can't do anything about that blessing. He thought he destroyed it in the Garden of Eden, but here it is again, that blessing of Abraham, that covenant thing, that Eden blessing, praise God. It's not supposed to work. It worked again and again and again and again. What about, the, what about the wall of separation, not between church and state, that don't even exist in the United States? Not in the United States Constitution. That's another bull that needs to be parked outside. <laughs> Amen. I'll be 73 in about a month, and I'm old enough to say what I want to. <laughs> and I'm old enough to act any way I want to act. <laughs> so don't come threaten me. Dear Lord, you come way too late. <laughs> I done been threatened. <laughs> Amen. It's like the Lord told me the other day, I was praying about this, uh, all of this, <laughs> this stuff. And <laughs> the Lord said, ah, 
He said, compared to Pharaoh and Abimelech, these boys are amateurs. <laughs> hey, Dickie, they amateurs, man. God said, you God, just laugh. He said, don't pay no attention to that, dear Lord. He said, they're just a bunch of wind. They just, they don't. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Amen. Well, <laughs> what happened between Egypt and the land of Goshen? A wall. An impenetrable wall. Disease couldn't get through it. Darkness couldn't get through it. There was light in the land of Goshen. Amen. Death couldn't get in there. Even the animals were separated. Amen. There's a wall. Do you know what the wall is? Yeah, that's the blessing. But, but do, do, you, do you know? Do you, you know where it is? Do you know what that wall is? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Ha, ha, ha. There's the wall, praise God. There's a wall of the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It's made us free from the law of sin. I'm a free man. I'm a free man. I'm not a cursed man. I'm a free man. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this blessing power that came in you when you got born again, the blessing of Abraham was released in you. That's in there. God is able to make all grace abound towards you, but not if you won't sow grace. What is grace and mercy? Forgiveness. What is that? That is an act of faith in God that has the overwhelming force of God's love and mercy and, gra and sin cannot stand in its presence. Now, when you forgive, you don't have to be just forgiving somebody that for some particular reason. Just forgive. Release the force of it. Turn with me to the book of Matthew. When, when uh, Jesus was dealing with me on this, he brought this up to me. And look in the ninth chapter of Matthew he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city and behold look they brought to him a sick man of the palsy lying on a bed are you looking then that what it said? Look, behold, I can see it. I can see that sick man lying on a bed. Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. Oh, they didn't like that. Certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blessed them. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, wherefore think you evil in your heart? Which is easier to say? Your sins be forgiven you? Or arise And walk. Well, they didn't any of them speak right up, did they? But 
Listen now. That you may know that the Son of Man, Son of God, no, Son of Man. Are you God or are you a man? Are you of the, uh, of the race of man? We're created men and women. We are of the race of man. That you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. What power? To forgive sin. Say it. The power to forgive sin. Say it. The power to forgive sin. He said to the sick of the palsy, Arise, take up your bed and go home. He arose and went home. And the Lord said, I want you to notice that the same power to forgive is the power to heal. What is it? Grace. Grace. Grace is not religious. Not a religious word. It's the power of the love of God to withhold no good thing from those who love Him. Love reaches out, but if you want love, it can't connect. It isn't because he's saying, I ain't going to love you. You don't love me. No, he's loving all the time. But when you cut it off, you won't forgive. He can't get a hold of you. You remember he said, uh, if, if, you, if, if, you have a, if you have a gathering, if you have a meal, and the only people you call are friends and family, and, you know, and that, what thank have you? Well, what does that mean? Well, see, Brother Copeland, now that means uh, you don't have any reward. You don't think Jesus knows the difference between reward and thank you? <laughs> Why didn't he say you, you, don't, you don't have any grounds for reward? No, he said, what thank have you? Well, who's going to thank you? He talked about People on the street. He talked about sinners out in the highways and the byways. Compel them to come. Don't just call your friends. Call call the poor. Huh? Amen. Hey, <laughs> Who's going to thank you for that? God is. Why? He can't get to them. They're not listening to him, but he loves them. But God can bless you and give you the material to bless them and then connect them to God. And God is saying, thank you, Phil. My Lord, I, I, I've been trying to get to that guy all these years. He wouldn't listen to me. I'm, I want you to know I appreciate you helping me with this. Amen. Here's a million more. Go do it some more. Yeah, do it. Remember what, you remember what the Lord said, uh, he that gives to the poor lendeth to the Lord and he will repay him. Well, what, on what basis does he repay it? Tenfold, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, hundredfold? I mean, what, how, how does God repay that? It doesn't say anything about a, a number there, does it? Just said God will repay him. <laughs> well, I know God better than that. He doesn't, he never has been one to just replace whatever you did. He, he, he's, he, that's just not his way. He'll stay ahead of you all the time if you'll walk in faith and, and listen to him. Well, if you'll study it out, he said, when you harvest your feet, 
and you leave a sheath in the field. Or later the term was used, a shock in the field. That's, that's before we had machines, you know, to pick up. You had to go up there and, and stack these things up or pile it up and then fork it over into a, a wagon or gather it somewhere. And he said, you, for, you forgot a sheath in the field. He said, don't go back and get it. Leave it for the widow, the orphan, and the stranger. The stranger. Wow. I want to leave him some for. I don't even know him. I don't owe him anything. Who's he? You don't know. Maybe some Gentile walking down the road. You better hope it is. Then he said, when you go over your olive tree, they took, you know, long poles, and they still do it this way today. They do con trees this way, other trees that bear nuts and fruits and things like that. You can take those poles and beat those boughs till they fall. Well, the ones that are not ripe yet, particularly olives, if they're not ripe, you can't beat them out of that tree. They won't fall because they don't all ripen at the same time. He said, when you do that, don't go back over your boughs of your trees again. Leave it for the widow, the orphan, and the stranger somebody you don't know. When you harvest your grapes, don't go back and glean your field. Leave it for the widow, the orphan, and the stranger. Now he said, I command you to do this thing. Ah, it has taken a, it taken a, different, it's taken a different turn now. He said, I command you to do Now, I'll ask you, when, let me, let me put it to you like this, who now owns that sheath, olives, grapes, who now owns that, that you grew, you tilled, you worked, but it's still out there in the field. God owns it because he commanded it done. Now it's his. Well, you think he don't pay for what's his? God is not a con. He's not going to con you out of anything. No, 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 no. And he's not going to just say, well, thank you. Now just go on and live on what little you got. I got the rest of it. There are people that think he's like that. But that's another thing he told me about this medical thing. He said, people accuse me of making people sick and accuse me of stealing their money and killing their children. And he said, I am God. I do not kill. I'm a covenant God. I don't kill. Now, he'll protect his own. But he's not out killing people to teach them. I command you to do this thing so that I may bless all the work of your hands. He's not going to pay you tenfold, a hundredfold. He's going to repay by blessing all the works of your hands. That is overflow magnitude blessing from heaven wide open windows that's beyond what you can see any way to you why because you obeyed amen 
You ought to get to the place where what you leave in your fields is more than used to be what you harvest. Would you like for me to tell you what that is? The blessing of the Lord. It maketh rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Amen. And yeah, you, I mean, you know, you, you just cadillac and along. Just, just believe in God and having faith in God, you know. Amen. <laughs> what are we going to do? Have faith in God. Oh, has it come to that? <laughs> no, when you live that way all the time. We're going to get into something Saturday night. I, 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 I know it's coming. Glory to God. Now, I'll close it with this. As far as I know. <laughs> I was preaching on Sunday morning earlier this month in um, Little Rock, Arkansas, there with, with Happy and Jeannie Caldwell in Agape Church. And Gloria and I were ministering there over that weekend. And I had Sunday morning service. <laughs> and, and this was what the Lord had instructed me to, to deliver. He woke me up a little after 4 o'clock that morning. Just, I woke up. And I saw him in the spirit. Now, I, I, didn't, I didn't see him with my, my natural eye. You know, but I saw him in the spirit. And instead of being right on a, I'm still laying there in the bed, of course. I woke up and I, I sat up just a little bit. I was a little startled when I woke up. And, and I heard it in my spirit. Have faith in God. I said, oh, glory. Have faith in God. And it's going over and over in me. And when I looked up, he wasn't standing like at the foot of the bed or anything, but he was up here like this and looked like a bit further away. He had a tray that was so large, he had his arm stretched all the way out because this huge tray. And it was, it was heaped up with cookies. And I thought, whoa, this is going to be good. <laughs> and I looked at him. He was not smiling. And I thought, man brings cookies ought to smile. <laughs> I mean, it just occurred to me. But he's very stern. And he said, have a cookie. <laughs> oh I just, I just sat there. Did you ever lay in the bed at attention? Man, I did. He said, your response is, I believe, I will, I take it, I have it, thank you, I forgive. The six eyes of faith. Now listen to what he covers. I believe that's your spirit. I will that's your soul. I take corresponding action I have 
confession of faith. Thank you, praise and gratitude. I forgive obedience. Most powerful thing that I've learned about faith and the love of God since 1967 when I first heard Brother Hagin preach and teach this. I've been living by faith ever since. But this is the most powerful thing I ever heard. And of course, Gloria and I both immediately put it into operation. It, it, it sets things in motion for immediate results. It's like what happened at Fig Tree. Well, it wasn't immediate, Brother Copeland. It was somewhere between 12 and 24 hours. No, 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 no. The, the thing started on the roots of that tree immediately. They only saw it later. I believe, I will. Now, these are, this isn't, I believe I will, thank you. No, these are statements. I believe. I will, I take it, I have it, thank you, I forgive. Why, why stick I forgive on the end of that? Because if you hadn't been forgiven, you wouldn't have, got the, you wouldn't have had the offer. And, and, that's when, and the Lord said then, he said, don't you understand that when I said have faith in God, I'm offering faith to you like a, like a sweet gift on a platter. He said, this is, this is faith is spiritual cookies and cake because it is everything you could possibly desire and more. And he said, it's not something you can earn. He said, I'm serving it to you. And I said out loud, I said, oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, you're, you're going to serve me? He said, Can I, didn't I say in my word that I am the chief servant of all? I said, yes, sir. He said, well, what do you think servants do? They serve. <laughs> I said, yes, sir, give me, another, give me a cookie. <laughs> oh, yeah, give me that cookie. <laughs> Amen. Now, he said, what if someone were to come up to you and say, Brother Copeland, would you like a cookie? No, thank you, I have one. Now, listen. You need to go over this, over it and over it, because the concept will develop. The most powerful words in there are, I have. Thank you. I forgive. When Gloria and I first came in this 43 years ago, 43 years of January, the whole Christian world was caught up in the idea that if God might do a miracle, if it wasn't instant, it wasn't God, and it wasn't a miracle. And I mean, it, it, it had just gotten to the point where there just was almost a faithless generation. Now, there's always been a remnant. You understand that? There's all, God's always had a faith people. I mean, even during the dark ages, he had somebody praying in tongues. Amen. It's always been somebody. Thank God for them. They're the real heroes of the church. Amen. All us preachers think we're going to get us some big trophy somewhere. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. We may get the, the big ones that we'll have to carry for somebody else. <laughs> or, or the mamas and the grandmamas that laid in the floor in the middle of the nighttime praying the power of God down on some heathen city and her own heathen family and her own heathen church and 
got it done. Hallelujah. Amen. And our ministries are just the product of the prayers of, of committed, dedicated people. My, 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 my. I'm, I'm so blessed with all of them. My mama was one of them. And she didn't quit and she went to heaven either. I think she got tougher. She's still in God's face over this. He told me that one time, Billy. He said, you are not going to fail if I have to get you up every morning and put you to bed every night. I said, thank you, sir. Why me? I mean, there's better men than I am that have failed. He said, I got your mother in my face. <laughs> I said, yes, I know. <laughs> I had her in my face too. Whoa, man. <laughs> and God knew what to do with her. I didn't. Man, I mean, I'd leave, I, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd leave home at night. I could hear her in there praying. Just going, oh, God, oh, God, don't let him have no fun. Oh, God. <laughs> and I'd, I'd leave, I'd, you know, I'm paying attention to that. And uh, or acted like I didn't. I really did. But, and I'd come back 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. She's still in there. And I didn't understand then why, but she had a, she, she had a death sentence hanging over her that she, her appendix was ruptured on the basketball court when she's in high school. She, she was 15 years old. And, um, and they, you know, they thought she had to die. But she was a prayer then. And uh, she and, and uh, my, my dad's sister and another one of the, the girls were all prayer partners. When they were just little girls, early teens, they started doing that. And, and one of them, my, my, my Aunt Barbara told me, she, I said, she said they'd go down in the storm cellar to pray. I said, Aunt Barbara, what do you go down that storm cellar for? She said, Kenneth, we get to pray. And, and she said something would happen. We didn't have any idea what it was. And she said, but we just start hollering and a jumping and a dancing around. And she said, we didn't want to quit. But you had to go down in that cellar and hide. She said, they'd, they'd, have, they'd have put us away if they'd have heard us do it. Back in those days, they would have. Early 20th century, I guess. Some of them they did. But they just kept praying mother wouldn't die. And so they had, back in those days, when they opened you up, brother, it wasn't some little scar like this. They, for an appendicitis operation, they'd open, they'd open you up from stem to stern. Big old scar. They opened her up and saw that it had ruptured. Well, they cleaned it up the best they could. They didn't even attempt to rearrange her lower abdomen. They didn't even sew her up. They just used uh, funeral clips, clipped her back together because she's going to die. Well, she wouldn't die. And then my grandfather encouraged the doctor to sew her up. And Indian people don't have much to say, but he understood it. He said, she dies, you die. <laughs> so he ran in there with a smile on his face and sewed her up right quick, but they didn't even attempt to put her back together. And then when she didn't die, she was so messed up that they told her she probably going to live another 10 years. So she lived every 10 years with that diagnosis ahead of her. Well, you're just, you know, back, back you know, you're just lucky. Ain't no such thing as luck. Get over that. Get it out of your vocabulary. You can trace the word L-U-C-K back to Lucifer, the name Lucifer. And it's not luck. It's spiritual law. And so she just kept living, and they'd say, well, now, you know, you're just lucky you made it this far, uh, but don't, don't, don't plan on another 10 years. Well, she set out to pray to all of her family in the kingdom of God. She didn't have the 10 years. And when she hit 70, she said, if I'd known I was going to live so long, I'd have taken better care of myself. <laughs> but she didn't sleep. I said, Daddy, don't she ever sleep? He said, she don't even wrinkle the sheets. 
she'd, she'd keep herself awake so she could pray. And when she got baptized in the Holy Ghost, brother, you could forget sleep. I mean, she, it was over. Why? And she prayed the whole she prayed the whole family in, all of us on both sides. She got us all, praise God. And then when Gloria and I got saved, she said, I've had the, the driest 30 days spiritually I've had in my life. I said, why, Mama? She said, I ain't got nothing to pray for. <laughs> so she set out then to, to pray all our high school football team into the kingdom. <laughs> and they're still getting saved. Chip, I had... I, I, my buddies call me even today. We're, we were a close team. We, we stayed in contact with one another. And uh, they still call me. Pray for me, Brother Kim. I preach every funeral <laughs> and just preach salvation. Praise, Praise God. God. Amen. Amen. And Mama has prayed that whole team in. She's still at it. Amen. Hallelujah. I told you I'm trying to close, dear Lord. I'm <laughs> Can you take just a little bit more? Because I do want to get to this before I turn you loose. I believe I will. That's not well, I believe I will. No. I believe, period. I will, period. Without your will, there will never be any action. I take it. Now listen. I take it. I have now we had to get over this thing if it wasn't instantaneous then it wasn't God I don't know it's just all over well I don't guess I got anything well we know better than that now we learned that we had to learn better than that 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 the, the words working the word is working faith is is working it was working in that tree all the time. They just didn't see it for about 20 hours or so, whatever it was. Somewhere between 12 and 24 hours. But it was working. Well, we had to learn that. We had to walk in that. Well, we got over in that to the point where we got in the ditch on over on the other side and got the idea if we're going to do it by faith, it's going to take 15 years. Well, that's unbelief of another kind. So I had the Lord ask me then. See, he, he's teaching me this. He said, do you have faith? I said, yes. Do you have disease? Well, immediately, well, no. The, the symptoms of it are still there, blah, 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 blah. He didn't ask me if I had any symptoms. See, he's, he's, he's letting me mental, mentally just roam all over the place because that's what, that's what happens. And he's, he's, he's allowing these thoughts to come in, in, into me even though he's right there with me. He's, let, he's letting these things come into my mind to teach me this. He said, no, do you have faith or do you have the flu? And that's the word you, do you have faith or do you have the flu? I said, well, I have faith. Well, you can't have them both. Well, I realized mentally I, I had allowed myself to think like that because my, I'm thinking the word's working and my faith working and, and it's, it's driving this out of me. It's right. No, 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 no. Do you have faith? Yes. Do you have the flu? No. You're going to have to make a choice. Right. Oh, Brother Copeland, I couldn't say I have. Until, don't give me that mess. I know every word of that. I've already been through that unbelief for myself. 
and you sure don't want to be bringing that up with Jesus and put his faith on the same level with the swine flu. I just can't imagine a Jew having anything to do with the swine flu in the first place. I'm not going to have nothing to do with it. Well, Brother Copeland, don't you, don't you think maybe you might take the flute? No, I took faith. <laughs> you see, you can't get around the words. Words are everything. They're not part, they are we live in a word-created, word-of-God-controlled environment. We live in, in a, in a, a word-dominated existence. Jesus said, you are justified by your words, you are condemned by your words, and you stand judgment for your words. That's about everything, isn't it? Condemned, justified, and judgment. Words are everything. Well, Satan understands that. He can't change the fact that we, he, he's, he's, he's controlled by words. He can't change that. He's an angel. He can't change anything, particularly after Jesus got through with him because he lost what little he got off of Adam. So now the only, the only way he can control you is to get you to say it. Well, he can't change the system. So what, what do you hear yourself saying? I believe I'm taking the flu. No, I have it now. <laughs> Damn. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that's the other side of Thanksgiving, isn't it? Oh. Curse it. That'll help it. Yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> blaspheme the thing. That'll, that'll really help you. <laughs> my, my mother said to a woman one time that she had something wrong with her mouth, and she said, well, you need to just take the name of Jesus and curse that thing. She said, I called it everything I could think of. <laughs> <laughs> Some of our kin folks <laughs> said, <laughs> "Oh, and I thought my mother was absolutely going. She couldn't. She couldn't contain it. She had to get up and go to the other room." And and she was talking to some of her uh, elder uh, members of her family. <laughs> she said something. And my mother just, you know, she's just talking the way she's used to talking. She said, oh, that ain't, that ain't called her by name. said, that ain't nothing but the devil. She said, the devil? She said, I'll have you know we're clean people. <laughs> she didn't think you'd have a devil unless you didn't bathe. <laughs> mother got so, but that's what they were talking. The devil couldn't have nothing to do with it if you take a bath. <laughs> There's only one system here. Only one. God introduced it. And it either is the true or it is the counterfeit of the same system, but you can't get out from under the system. You conceive it, you believe it, you say it, it comes to pass. There is no other way. Now the world doesn't know what they're doing. And if they see or hear you speak well, 
and nice things to your car? Oh, hello, car. The Lord gave you to me to enjoy. Oh, he gives us richly all things to enjoy. Car, nobody is ever going to bump you, and you're bumping nobody. That's the right. blood of Jesus is yes. over you, and they're standing on their saying, uh, He's talking to his car. <laughs> yes. Boy's lost it. Yet, he talks to his car. Right. You yeah. piece yeah. of junk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I ever get you paid for, you are out of here. Uh, Every right. time. Why do you do me this way? Every time you just break, you're just no good, you're just, <clears throat> I hate you. Huh? Hey, make it a point to watch for it. It's like, it's like a cartoon. It's all over the place. Stand there sometime at the counter and, and just listen to people. You worthless devil. <laughs> Get mad at their tools. You sorry. I walked in the hangar one day. There, my airplane was in the shop, and I walked in there. This particular model of airplanes has got fuel tanks on the on the wing tips, and the tail end of that tank comes to a point back there. And on the average size guy, it is just this high. I've done it. I mean, boom, just just oh, oh. And most people don't say, "Oh, you sweet thing." No. Uh -huh. <laughs> And I, I walked in the hangar, and this mechanic that was working on my airplane, he, he got up, and he, went, he, got, he got up he, in his, with his tools or something, and he raised up, and oh, he hit that tip tank, and it hit him right there just like I knocked him silly, you know. And I heard what he said, and he heard what he said, and, 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 oh, and he looked up and saw me and said, oh, preacher, Forgive me. I said, don't let me cramp your style. <laughs> you know, I said, Jesus said when he was on the earth that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks, and we know what you're full of. <laughs> and I, don't, I didn't help him much. He just, oh, he turned back around. I laid hands on him, and the Lord healed him, thank goodness, because I had to fly that thing after he fixed it, you know. Anyway. The system is the same. That's the reason this is so vitally important. That's the reason it isn't based on what you feel. It's not based on what you can see. It's not based on how it looks like it is. The power of the blessing is in us and the power of the curse is in the earth. But it has no power over us unless we yield to it. Conceive it, believe it, say it, it'll come to pass. Oh man. Boy, the whole atmosphere has changed down there where I work. Yeah, I know it. I just know it. I, I can tell by the way. I can tell by the way the foreman looks at me. They're gonna lay me off. Every, every morning I go to work, I, I don't even want to open my locker, man. There's gonna be a there's gonna be a pink slip hanging in there. I just know what's happened. Well, brother Copeland, I mean, you know, you just get worried about things. No, that's meditation. 
It's meditating on the lies of the devil until you get a concept of it. It looks like it's going to come to pass and you start feeling like it's going to come to pass. And then you begin to, you just say whatever you feel. Well, what do you, what, what, what do you, what do you say? Uh, oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know, Brother, brother Phil. Uh, you know, I, just, I believe they're going to lay me off. I believe it. They're going to lay me off. What have you done? You have taken the fear. Now the fear will connect you to the spirit of fear. And he's also the antichrist, the anti-anointing. He is also the spirit of poverty. He's the spirit of death. He's the spirit of sickness and disease, the spirit of sin and death. And fear will connect you to him. Now listen to yourself. I just know they're going to lay me off. I don't know what we're going to do. Man, in this kind of economy, at my age, what am I going to do, man? I done lost everything I had in the stock market. I know. If they lay me off, you can forget this house. I owe everybody in town. I don't know why this kind of thing happens to me all the time anyway. My family will be the ones that get the flu. You wait and see. You just wait and see. They'll be the ones that get it. Bad enough that they're going to lay me off. When they lay me off, I'm going to lose my insurance. We got to have that government plan. We don't have that government plan. We're going to all die. You're going to die whether the government's got any plan or not. Because if they, if, they, if they would have set up a government plan, you know what you'll start saying? Ah, uh, you know how it works with me. They'll run out of pills when I get there. And you know what they said? You get on that government plan, man, that, that, you know, they'll let you die. <laughs> What are we going to do? Right. Right. That's, a, that's the way the world lives. They live in that, in that turmoil all the time. Yeah. When their economy was great, they were worried. Mm -hmm. right. Why? Well, you know, Brother Copeland, everybody's got to be afraid. I guess a little free fear is healthy. Mm-hmm, I guess. The book of Revelation says that the fearful, starts off with the fearful, the whoremonger, the liar, will all have their part in the lake of fire. So I guess a little fear, you know, maybe that's healthy to have a little fear. I guess a little whoring around is healthy, don't you guess? <laughs> it's probably just as healthy as the fear. <laughs> Lying, stealing. Well, you better lie. If you're going to be running around with whores, you better lie. <laughs> understand why this always happens to me. Well, a guy came in there and wanted him to tune up his car. And so he, instead of putting in new, new spark plugs like it called for, 
The ones he had in there weren't all that bad, so he just cleaned them, regapped them, but he charged him for a new set. Well, you know, I mean, that ain't much. The guy, never, he was ready to pay for all new stuff anyway. He never knew it. Didn't bother him any. So what's a set of spark plugs cost now? What are they, five, six dollars a piece now? Something like that? Say it's six bucks a piece, there's eight of them. How much is six times eight? That's about the same as it used to be, wasn't it? <laughs> when I quit mechanicing, there's about 40 cents a piece. <laughs> but ain't nobody had 40 cents either. Oh, yeah. My gas tank was rusted from the halfway mark up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, oh, oh, yeah, we ever bought was a dollar's worth of regular. <laughs> but a dollar's worth of regular, but you know, that is four, five, six gallons. Pretty good. But boy, a dollar was hard to find. So, he comes home one day and, uh, he said, I don't understand that. His wife said, what? He said, every time we get just the least bit ahead, it seems like something happens. What, what happened to you today? He said, that my, my main shop air compressor broke down today. I had to replace the whole thing. She said, what did it cost? Can you, can you believe this? $4,800. He said, wait a minute. Every time, why does this kind of stuff happen? The hundred fold is working. He beat that guy out of $4,800, and so $4,800 come home to rest for him. It works all the time. Only he believes his hundred fold stronger than you believe yours. He flat believes that it's coming. He just doesn't know where the seed to it was. And Satan won't let him know. And, and that's the reason the devil tries to keep him out of meetings like this and keep him from finding out about it. And he'll get mad and curse it. What, if, what do you think would have happened if God were created in his likeness? I was reading Billy, in the Hamas, where the, one of the commentaries of the sages was that when man became a living being, the way he translated it, he said, and man became a living, speaking spirit like God. He had the blessing of speaking, and it comes to pass. Oh, I could tell you some things that God's shown me about that, but I, I'd like to have you come back tomorrow, so I won't tell you so much. Uh, <laughs> maybe some of these days. What if God had stood up there and said, Damn, it's dark. <laughs> well, forgive me for being crude, but I... But uh, uh, you, you're a speaking spirit like God. Why do you think it's all right for you to say that and not all right for him to say it? Right. Well, Brother Copeland, if he'd have said that, it has been still dark. Well, it's coming to pass on you just the same as it would have on him. Now, there's the system. I believe. I will. I take it. I have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I forgive. Now, when you, when you released forgiveness and released grace, now he is releasing all grace. The Bible said he's able to make all grace abound towards you well then what causes him to do it when you release faith and forgive 
you release grace, ah, and you turn him loose to bless you when all the works of your hands, all that's around you, all that, it, oh, glory to God, you begin to replenish the earth. You don't see a bad economy as, oh, a a terrible future. No, you see it as an opportunity to bless people, the opportunity to help people, keep people from losing their home. Oh, Brother Copeland, I don't have that kind of money. That's your fault, not God's. Why is it my fault? Because you've been saying something else? Well, you know, now, we're just not wealthy people. We're, you know, we we just... Is that right? Yeah, you know, we poor but proud. <laughs> or poor but we clean. <laughs> and did you earn your salvation? How'd you get it? Grace and faith, right? Hadn't it been for grace, faith wouldn't have done you any good. Hadn't it been for faith, grace wouldn't have done you. Well, how'd you get your healing? Did you earn it? How'd you get it? How'd you get baptized in the Holy Ghost? Did you earn the gifts of the Spirit? If you did, you... uh, uh, I'm suspect of what you got. (laughs) No, you know better than that. How'd you get it? Grace and faith. Well, what made you think you're supposed to earn your money? (laughs) You mean I'm not supposed to work? I never said nothing about you not working. Did I? I'm talking about you toiling for a living. Listen, toiling, eating by the sweat of your brow was the first curse that came on man and it was the first curse that was redeemed. That curse didn't even make it through the flood. God stopped that one before he stopped any of the rest. He didn't want nobody earning, working for a living. Well, what am I supposed to do? Work on assignment. And believe for your living. We live by faith. Romans 10, 38, the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3, the just shall live by faith. Romans, the just shall live by faith. Amos, the just shall live by faith. Who are the just? What does just mean? What does it mean? To be just. Okay, Lynn, what does it mean to be justified? What is that? I mean, what are we talking about here? It comes from justice. There is a demand that justice makes. That justice isn't demanding anything out of me because I'm not breaking the law. When you become a lawbreaker, then justice has to be served. Because what you did was illegal. Hmm? Justified means justice has been served by grace. Justice, eternal justice. God's judge, he is the only just. And he's been satisfied by the blood of Jesus. Far rather than that than have you died. Because if you died, there wasn't anything you could do about it. But he died and made covenant to justify you and make you right when you The just shall live by faith. What do you do for a living? (laughs) I believe God. 
that all you do just sit around and believe God? No, I'm on call 24 hours a day. I work on assignment. Amen. The body of Christ is not a civilian organization. We're a military organization, and he is the commander-in-chief. Amen. I'm telling you, the military is designed after God. God is not like the military. The military is like God. So, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Well, where do I serve? Chip, wherever the, he needs me. If he needs me cleaning out the latrines of a church, that's where I'm going. That don't make me poor. I'm on over in my jet. <laughs> Why? Are you kidding me? I'm richer than I'll ever know. My father, oh, Abba, Father, I have a father. Oh, and he's God, and he's big, and he's rich, and he's mine. <laughs> I'm not looking for a living. I'm looking for a giving. Hallelujah. I am an heir. I am a joint heir of the wealthiest operation in the universe. Hallelujah. He gives me all things to enjoy. And if my big brother needs me in sweeping out a church, bless God, where is it? And where's the closest airport? I don't live off a janitor's salary. That's my son. Amen. I'm not going to charge the church for it. But I am a tither. And I am a giver. And I'm obedient to my commander. And I will serve where he tells me to serve. Well, Brother Copeland, now he may want you to be poor over there. Well, then he'd have to lie to me. My God shall supply all of your needs. But now wait a minute. That's not why he gives you things. No, no, no. He doesn't give you things to meet your needs. Come on now, get over that. He doesn't give you things to meet your needs. Does he give it to us for then? Uh, there's a Bible right there. Let's let's find out. O open that up to First Timothy. That thing's in English, isn't it? <laughs> Good. Look over there to the sixth chapter. Well, he had all kinds of stuff in there. <laughs> well, let's see here. I can tell it's different on the wrong side of the page. Okay. <laughs> fight the good fight of faith. Urge in the sight of God who gives life to all things. Wow. Think of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, here's something. Look, Com commit, commend those who are rich in this present age uh, to sell their Rolex <laughs> and get rid of their cars and be hungry and, and be pious. Have you ever been pious? <laughs> I don't know what that is. Do you? <laughs> No, he said, tell those that are rich in this world not to be haughty or to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. Now listen, what does A-L-L -L spell? What does it mean? All. All. Who gives us 
richly, not poorly, richly all things to enjoy. Now, out of that, your needs are going to be met. But that's not why he gave it to you to meet your needs. He gave it to you to enjoy. Because he loves you. He don't want to see you hurting. He don't want to see you in pain. He don't want to see you without. He don't want to see you losing your house. That's what happens when you go to them Babylonians to get the money. Go to him. You can't borrow from him. And he'll always give you more than you're worth. <laughs> yes. That's, that's where religion failed us. It, it came to the point, it got so bad that it finally came to the point, if you enjoy it at all, it must be sin. That's terrible. But that's religion. It is terrible. It, it's a thief. And it kills and it destroys. And I'm not talking about bad, mean, ugly people. I'm talking about deceived people. Come on out of there. Out in the bright sunshine of the world of faith. For this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our Stand up and give the Lord a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Say it, I have faith. I take it. No, no, come on. I believe. I will. I take it. I have it. I forgive. Thank you. Give the Lord thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, glory, 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 glory. I'm not bound to this economy. No, I'm not bound to this economy. I am free, praise God. No, I'm not free because I'm an American. America is free because of Jesus, hallelujah. And it ain't over yet, you understand? No, no. The United States still has a covenant with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And 400 years ago, there was a cross planted on what is now Virginia Beach. And it was planted and it was, it, there was a covenant entered into between Jesus and the man that had a document from the king of England giving him title deed to the entire continent upon which the United States sits from the Atlantic to the Pacific. He went and asked, he asked the king for it. They told him he was crazy. The king would kill you to go in there and ask him for that. He said if, if I, and he was chaplain on the ship and the crew that was making this voyage. He went to the king. He said, if I'm going to leave my family, leave my home, my church, my congregation, and sail this voyage for you, you give me that land. And he did it. He titled deed it to this preacher, this conference. 
and I mean, <laughs> he had something to make covenant with. He was not empty words. And he and his entire crew landed up there and stuck a 12-foot high cross in a hole in that sandy beach and claimed this continent for the Lord Jesus Christ and the preaching of the gospel. And they ain't taking it away from us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, tell me about it. Did you get anything out of this tonight? Praise God. Give the Lord another praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for anyone present tonight that doesn't know you as Savior. And I thank you for your word and for your presence tonight. Thank you, sir. Together we release the anointing that that mysterious, majestic, wonderful presence when someone down in, in their innermost being suddenly has a knowing that, oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh my, he's not only the Son of God, but he's my Lord. Oh, he's my Savior and he loves me. And he's calling for me. And he wants me. And I want him. Oh, how well I remember it. How well so many in here remember it. And it's happening right now to several people in this congregation. If you say to me tonight, Brother Copeland, I I've never made Jesus the Lord of my life, but oh, if you'll lead me in that prayer, I'll accept him as my Lord. If you would, just raise your hand wherever you are. Anyone there to say, Brother Copeland, I've known Jesus, but I've, I've gotten out of fellowship with God. I, some, I've even gotten back on the street. I, do, you think, do you think he would have me back? Have you back? My dear, he's not the one that left. He's right where you left him. With his arms open. You think it'll ever be as good as it was? <laughs> it'll be far better than that. Because as far as he's concerned, all you need to do is just accept his forgiveness and his mercy and his grace. You don't have to be ashamed. Don't run from God when you sin. Run to him. Amen. Hallelujah. Or it might be that you know Jesus, you're in fellowship with the Lord, but you've never been baptized in the Holy Ghost speaking with if you would, just raise your hand. It's for you, you know. It's by grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's everyone raise our hand. And those of you that, that fit into those categories, I want you to lift your hand up just like everybody else. And let's lead them to the throne of grace tonight all of us, and you raise your hand. I'm telling you, you pray it out loud enough where you can hear it with your own words now. Oh, Brother Copeland, it can't be just that easy. Hey, wait a minute. It wasn't easy at all. There wasn't anything easy about it, but Jesus did all the hard part. He did everything. He went to hell to keep you from going. He was raised from the dead so you could be. He was called before the Father in heaven so he could say to you, come boldly to the throne of grace. But there's one thing he could not do for you, and that's pray the prayer for you. You'll have to say, I believe, I will. 
I take you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart. I believe with all my heart that Jesus has been raised from the dead. Thank you for my forgiveness. I take it. Thank you for my cleansing. I take it. Fill me now with your precious Holy Spirit. You promised it in your word. I believe. I will. I take the Holy Spirit now. Oh, I have him. Thank you. I forgive that my heavenly father forgives me my trespasses. I forgive. I forgive. I can do that. I have faith now. I have the spirit of God in me. I can say it. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I forgive. I receive my forgiveness. I receive my healing. I have faith in God. I believe. I will. I take it. I have it. Thank you. I give the Lord praise and thanksgiving. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Billy, you want to close it? You want me to close it? You want George to close it? Or just... I want to tell them about tomorrow. Oh, you better do that? Yeah. Praise Maybe. the Lord. And I want to uh, let them know that you will not be speaking on Saturday night. You're speaking on Sunday night. Sunday night? Yes. Is oh. that okay? Huh? Glory said it was okay. Well... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you want me to receive the offering? Tonight? Oh, Sunday night? Sunday night. Oh, yeah, absolutely, yes. When are you going to give it to me? <laughs> okay. Who said this? All right. Um, it's it. yours. <laughs> no, don't, no, don't get me in trouble now. <laughs> I love you, Bill. I love you, too. Bless the Lord. I just want to remind you that tomorrow at 930 is Lucy. McGee. And then remember that tomorrow afternoon is 2.30 is a special meeting that I saw where the seasoned prayers and the younger prayers are going to give you a little short testimony and then the, the, uh, the seasoned prayers and the youth and all of you fitting there somewhere are going to be praying together. It'll be a really special meeting. Bless the Lord. I saw it in the spirit. I'm really looking forward to that. And so we thank each one of you for coming and via Dias, go with God. Good night.